This is the Rich Dad Radio Show. The good news and bad news about money. Here's Robert Kiyosaki. Hello, hello, hello. Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show. The good news and bad news about money. And today we have one of our most popular guests coming back here, Gerald Salante. And I'm going to give him an unbiased plug for his unbelievable pro, uh, product, his trends, the Trends Journal. And I, I'm saying to him, he, he, him and I must be psychic or, you know, like twins with Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito. And we're connected to the hip because the um, title of this week's Trends Journal, which I highly recommend everybody getting, is Stay Stupid. And I was, you know how, Gerald, you can't tell jokes anymore. So anyway, I have to text. I have to do it secretly. So the Trends Journal is Stay Stupid, Stay in the Mainstream. And I agree, a 100%, everybody, you've got to get Gerald Salenti's The Trend Journal, because I look forward to it for entertainment value, but also enlightenment value. Welcome to the Rich Dad Show, Gerald. Ah, oh, thank you so much for having me on. How and, do you how do you get so much information packed in that little thing, that journal? Uh, you know, I've never worked harder in my life, and I have a good team. I, and, you know, we're doing the very best we can, because these are the most crucial times of my yes. life. In you know, we're both not kids, you know. If you haven't been no. there, don't tell me what it was. Yeah. And I know what it was, and I know what it is, and I see where it's going. And remember, like, you know, when I was a kid, you know, I was 18 years old. I had a Beretta, you know. Nobody in school would blow, uh, you know, a baby boom generation. First ones born, born 1946 to 40, 50 kids in my class. Baby boom. I don't think you're allowed to say that one anymore either. Oh, no. Yeah. They're doing that in the U.K., uh, and anyway, you know, there were no, you didn't go through a security, a metal detector. Yeah. You didn't have guards around. Kids yeah. weren't shooting each other. Yeah. You're talking about the way we grew up. Yeah. yeah. There were neighborhoods you didn't go into. They were tough. Yeah. But you didn't have to worry about every day, you know. Oh, oh, Starbucks just closed down, what, 11 places because of the people out of their minds? Yep. Oh, yeah, look what's happened to society. And right. you said that woman that plays the law professor. Plays? <laughs> I think she yeah, is because, a law professor. And you, and you said, you know, how could anybody with a mind like that? Look at I the mean, clowns running our, our, our world. Well, she entered the twilight zone beyond stupid. I didn't think it existed, but I now know it does exist. <laughs> but who's your favorite president? Who's your favorite chancellor? Who's your favorite prime minister? You know, that well, great artist we have for the Trends Journal, Anthony Frieda, that does these covers. If I said to him, listen, Anthony, I want you to come up with a guy that we can make the biggest clown you could ever look at, <laughs> and we'll make him the prime minister of the UK. We'll call him <laughs> Boris Johnson. You couldn't come up with a, a, a freakier freak. No. And how about Biden and Kamala? Oh, my God. Uh, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not Republican or Democrat. You know, Trump no. is my friend. But I support the freedom of choice of who we want to vote for. That's all it is. Not, I'm not Republican or Democrat. I just want freedom. But, yeah, I, was but talking, I, was, hey, I was talking to this young woman. I said, JFK. She never heard of him. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't know who JFK was. I said he was a president. Really? I can't believe how stupid the kids are. I mean, not that they're stupid. They're in, misinformed. They're coming out of school so misinformed or underinformed. You know that those old saying that we used to have as a kid, milk, more information, less knowledge. I mean, that applies to what's happening in schools today. I can't believe it. Well, think about it. it I think it cost about $186,000 to educate a person. I shouldn't say educate them, to put into a government system from <laughs> kindergarten to, to, to 12th grade. So now you're spending all that money, and what do they do? They get a job working at Walmart, getting a job driving a UPS or, or, or a Amazon truck. What do they do? They work at Home Depot. What do they, where do they, why did you send them to school all these years if this is the career they're going to have? And you can't hurt their feelings. You have to give Again, everybody a trophy. It, it, it's, it's, they, they hated school probably. That's why they had the jobs there. I hated every day of school. I got left back in the fifth grade, ran away from kindergarten, <laughs> barely got out of high school. You know, it, 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 
I'm just saying the system by their deeds, you shall know them. We're spending almost $200,000 to educate somebody. You didn't have to go to school to work at these jobs. So, so let me ask this question. Okay. So this, this, like I said, where it must be psychic because I'm tweeting about how can somebody go beyond stupid? But like Rod Serling on the twilight zone said, when we were kids, you entered a whole nother zone of stupidity. And so the trans journalists stay stupid, stay in the mainstream. What did you mean by that? What is this trans journal about? Well, that, you know, that's the, the trends journals about we tell people what in the world is going on, yeah. what it means, what's next and what to do. And of course, the motto is think for yourself. You don't have to do what we tell you to do. But the mainstream, all it is, is it's, it's constant propaganda. Yep. And, and they never stop. And they're rookies. And by the way, I used to be on Oprah the Today Show, Good Morning America, like you are, you're everywhere. You know what the deal is. I mean, you're working for the, you know, you're working for the corporation. Right. And they want you to say what they want you to say, and you got to be in the game. Go back to the Iraq War. The, the facts are there by fairness and accuracy and reporting. The only people they put on there were, were pro-war. Right. The, the, amount, the amount of people that were anti-war were fractional. Oh, and they fired that guy, Phil Donahue, from MSNBC for coming out against the war. So what you're getting is you're getting the system. And when right. it goes back to remember the main, you know, the Hearst... Newspaper with the with the with the uh, with the um, Spanish American War, right? And you go back to the New York Times. You know, I said I'm Hussein. He has them aluminum tubes. Well, we were wrong, but we'll tell that after we we told the the, the propaganda. Okay, so let me so let me read some of the enticing subjects that are in this day's today's trends journal. It says here. The new world disorder, top trend, emerging nations diving into debt default. And did you see last night when Tucker Carlson, they're in Sri Lanka and they're watching the rioting going on because everything is falling apart in Sri Lanka. I'm going, holy man, that's my friend's home. Wow. And it's just coming apart. The other thing is the new world disorder, top trend, Germany rations power as Russia cuts gas supplies. And if that's not enough, we want to buy the Trends Journal and read it. Spotlight China, Western <coughs> investors flock back to China. I thought they were the enemy. Do you know in Vietnam, I, I went to Vietnam twice as a Marine pilot, we won the war. But people don't know that we stopped Chinese communism in Vietnam. But what did they report? None of that. I remember watching Walter Cronkite on TV, and, what, and I know he's fed the news, but what he reported about the battles we fought in wasn't true, didn't happen. But they show me lie massacre, they show all the atrocities that the American troops caused. And then I come back, I land at Norton Air Force Base in 1972, I'm getting off the plane, I'm hit by eggs, spit on, called baby uh, killer. All uh, these hippies from the Woodstock, genera Woodstock generation, just crucifying us. That's because of the news. And so that's why the Trans Journal, you, you, <laughs> You, you got to read the stuff because Joel and his team go all out. I mean, we look forward to what you're saying. Thank you. Because I want to get, I want to stay away from MSNBC, you know, and I'm in the markets all the time. We call it CNBS. <laughs> I mean, holy mackerel. Buy the dip, the Fed's on your dome. Don't fight the Fed. I'm going, holy mackerel. And we're sliding into the biggest crash in history. And I, I, I am on record here. This is my book, Rich Dad's Prophecy, why the biggest stock market crash in history is still coming yep. and how you can prepare yourself and profit from it. So I'm going to get extremely rich because of the trends journal and things I'm reading. I say, okay, I'm ahead of the, I'm ahead of the curve. But what about the baby boomers, Gerald? My generation, your generation, with the first generation with a 401k, I think less than 50% have $100,000 in their 401k and it's been cutting, cut in half to a 101k right now, a quarter percent. What's gonna to happen to them, Gerald? Yeah, you noted it with your book. Your new book says it all. We are into the worst financial crisis and geopolitical crisis, socioeconomic crisis in, in the history of, of the world. Of the world. America's the biggest debtor nation in the world right now. And all we do is keep blowing bubbles up and the bubble has met the pin. 
that's going to pop. It's popping. And now with them raising interest rates, inflation continue to skyrocket. The, what the COVID war did is unprecedented. It's incalculable the damage it's done. It killed the lives and livelihoods of billions of people. Right. You mentioned about what's going on in Sri Lanka. How about exa- exactly what you said? You know, it's the new world disorder. It's going on all over. Yeah. When people lose everything and they have nothing left to lose, they lose it. And they've lost everything. Look at all the businesses just in America that have gone out of business. What, a third of the dry cleaners? Gone. What's office occupancy rate? Eh, depending on what you look at in the metro areas, oh, it's around 40%. You mean it's 60% lower? Oh, no more happy hours. Oh, don't have to, uh, you know, again, go to the dry cleaners. I'm working from home now. Oh, oh, all the delicatessens, all of the businesses that used to depend on commuters, gone. Gone. So that's why, ladies and gentlemen, the Trends Journal is essential because you've got to stay abreast of what's happening and don't depend upon mainstream news. I remember, Gerald, I'm a, you know, I'm a Marine pilot in Vietnam. We just got hammered. We hammered back at a place called Quang Tree. There was way. We pounded them. We pounded the Chinese communists. And what does Walter Cronkite report? All our atrocities. <laughs> and there were atrocities, but they were on both sides. It was fake news, exactly as Donald Trump says. And so that's why the Trans Journal, and that's why I wrote this book here, Rich Dad's Prophecy. I got attacked by these stock market guys. I won't mention their name because they're pretty famous. How can you be so negative? I said, well, how can you be so dysfunctional, you idiot? I mean, do you think stock markets always keep going up? Oh, yes, they do. The Fed, the Fed's got your back. I said, you're an idiot. You're an idiot. How can people be that stupid, Gerald? Well, you know, my father, may rest in peace, used to say to me when I get upset, he said, son, take it easy. easy. He said, people have little minds. You know, yeah, everybody knows their favorite baseball team, all the players, you know, every team, everything about them. You know, I loved that when I was a young guy. But, you know, you, you grow out of that and start putting your mind in another direction, and they're not doing it. Yeah, I mean, again, they're listening to the mainstream. They get sound. They they live by sound bites. They're not they're not doing the research to find out the details of what's going on. And you talked about the Chinese communists. How about bringing China into the World Trade Organization <laughs> by Bill Clinton? Oh, and they came in two two weeks after officially after nine eleven when nobody was looking. And you look at China's GDP, like from 1970, and then 2001, a straight line up. Oh, and all our jobs that went over to to communist China. Oh, the communist China that we used to make fun of, where the people wore masks and they could lock down anything they wanted to do and and tell you what to do. Oh, and we're going to follow that path. I'm the... I'm the mayor, I'm the governor, I'm the senator. We're going to lock you down. The Chinese way, you must obey. Welcome to America. Right. And I, t- I tell you, Gerald, I mean, I'll, I'll repeat myself. The worst thing was watching the Walter Cronkite on the CBS Evening News. We just got our asses pounded. We fought back. And what they reported wasn't the truth. I mean, I was there. I saw it with my own eyes, you know. We lost so many men. Good oh, men. 50, yeah. And you know, so I go to the I go to the uh, Vietnam Wall. I'm gonna cry. I'm dead inside, because we didn't have we didn't have to die for that. We didn't we didn't fight for this. We fought for our freedom, the freedom of speech, the freedom of to carry guns, the freedom to vote for who you want, the freedom of religion. That's what we fought for. And it's gone. It's gone. I'm afraid to say anything. I have to I have to kind of call people. I'm afraid of texting because somebody's gonna hack my text. <laughs> Anyway, when we'll get back, I want you to uh, go into what you see coming up. I've never seen such cartoons in my life. What happened to Boris Johnson? I mean, the prime minister. How did we get this clown Biden in there? I mean, where did that guy pop out of? I mean, I Again, can't it, it, the people that are running our lives, they're, they're, they're mentally ill. They're pathological liars. They can lie perfectly. They're sociopaths and psychopaths. And nobody wants to call a spade a spade. Please subscribe to the Trends Journal. 
and you've got to get the news straight. That is the most important thing you can do today. We'll be right back. On the show, Robert stresses the importance of investing in assets that will outpace inflation and keep your wealth safe during recessions. But in 2022, that's easier said than done. Stocks and bonds often see negative returns when prices drastically rise, real estate doesn't hold its value, and commodities have already surged. There's not much left. Well, according to Bloomberg, there's one hard asset nearly everyone is overlooking, fine art. They say art can serve as an inflation hedge in almost any environment, and Bank of America agrees. They declared that as inflation reaches a secular turning point, investors should buy real assets like art. Contemporary art appreciates by 23% annually on average when inflation is above 3%. That's significantly better than real estate and gold, but none of this should surprise you. Why? Ultra-wealthy investors have preserved their wealth with art for hundreds of years, and now you can too with Masterworks. It's the new tech platform that lets you invest in shares of paintings by Warhol, Picasso, and Monet, and the results so far have been incredible. Since 2019, they've sold four paintings and got a 30% net return every time. And you don't need hundreds of millions to hedge your portfolio with art anymore. You just need a solid internet connection. To date, users have invested over half a billion dollars with them. And here's the best part. You can skip the wait list and try Masterworks for free by going to masterworks.art slash rich dad. That's masterworks.art slash rich dad. See important disclosures at masterworks.io slash cd. Feeling powerless over current events and your financial future? Financial freedom is your freedom. Robert Kiyosaki is the best-selling author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Over 40 million people have taken Robert's advice. Now it's your turn. Attend Robert's free virtual wealth building event. Claim your free access now at richdadfree.com. Don't wait. Access is limited. Go to richdadfree.com. That's richdadfree.com. Welcome back. Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show. The good news and bad news about money. Our guest today is a very popular guest, Gerald Salente. I strongly recommend. I mean, our company looks forward to receiving the Trans Journal because, as I said, one of the saddest things about being a Marine pilot in Vietnam, the battles we fought in, we won, but we were reported as losers by the press. And there was nothing more depressing than to come back home in 72 and get spit on. It's a horrible, horrible way to live. And of course, I read this book here in 1965. <clears throat> I was in school in New York. And the economics teacher says, well, you're not going to read Malthus or David, I mean, um, what's his name? Anyway, the, Mal, all, the regular economist, you're going to read Marx. I said, why? He says, because that's the enemy. <clears throat> and I went, holy mackerel. So I was just in New York last week. Um, we took a company public on the New York Stock Exchange. The goal of every, the goal of every red-blooded entrepreneur, free capitalist entrepreneur, stand on the stage and clap as your company goes public and you get rich. And then we flew directly from there to Provo, Utah. Went down 625 feet. We did a show from inside the mine, the deepest podcast in history. But only in America can you, can you do that, and then we flow home. That was in one day, and that morning I was walking around, <clears throat> you know, the Upper East Side where I, went, where I grew up. I love New York City, you know. And I was so saying to Gerald, I was at Chompy's um, Jewish Delicatessen having a, uh, what do you call those things, on rye, pastrami on rye. I thought it was in heaven. But all that because of New York. So we have Charlie's dear friend with the same vintage here, and his his his, his um, product is the Trans Journal. So, Gerald, what is on your mind today with the Trans Journal? You tell us what's going on with you. Well, you know the big issue is inflation, and um, again, the economy was artificially injected with all this monetary methadone to keep the money junkies high. The, the, everything should have crashed in 2020 when they locked down most of the right. country and most of the world. Right. And it's just artificially boosted up with record low interest rates and countless, countless trillions of dollars pumped in by the government. And now with inflation, and they kept you know lying about it or being stupid, whatever you want to decide, first it was temporary and then it was transitory. They lied about it. 
You're, you're looking at the EU with what, 8.6% in inflation rate and negative interest rates minus a, a, a 0.50? And, and, and the United States, when you have uh, the inflation rate just came in at 9.1 and, and it was temporary and transitory. So they're going to keep raising rates. The higher rates go, the deeper the economy goes, the deeper the markets go. End of story. And you're looking what happened in over in Canada uh, recently. They just raised rates 1%. Oh, and that clown over there playing as central banks to his BSing too, that he didn't expect inflation to go this high. So, so John, let me throw you two curveballs because this kind of disturbs me. What happened to Boris Johnson and then what happened to Kazuhisa Abe? I mean, for the Japanese to assassinate somebody, that's, so, uh, that's more American than Japanese. And then, so what I heard was that um, Abe was pr- protecting Avumectin or something. He refused to play along with Big Pharma. That's what I was told. I don't know if you heard anything like that. I don't know. And Boris Johnson, what happened to him? And then how, how do we get this guy Biden in here? What's going on? Again, it's a freak show. Look at them. You can't get a better cartoon character than Boris Johnson. <laughs> the guy kept lying all the time, you know. You know, locking down everybody while he's partying. And getting caught one lie after another. And that's what they all do, by the way. When they all get caught for these lies, like the guy Gavin Newsom, oh, that's geez. now going to be they were talking about running as the Democratic challenger against Biden for 2024. <laughs> this guy's partying up in, in, in Napa Valley. The French and laundry. locking down everybody. And then when they get caught, they say, you know, I'm really sorry. I apologize. Well, you're sorry you got caught. You apologize for nothing. It's a freak show. We have mentally ill people running and ruining our lives. How, how about Joe Biden calling Latinos tacos? Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Can you imagine that? <laughs> how about what Mickey Mouse said to Donald Duck? <laughs> I mean, that's what we're talking about here. Everybody, you've got to get the Trans Journal if you want to say, I look forward to it. It's a lot. Of, I don't know how you guys pump out so much stuff yeah. that is what what's on my mind anyway, <clears throat> unless you're addicted to mainstream media, CNN, MSNBC, CBS. Why is this happening, Gerald? Please, please tell me. <laughs> well, again, I was talking about Bill Clinton. You know, that guy destroyed this country in so many ways more than others. And, and again, you know, with the uh, Na- bringing NAFTA, taking our jobs to Mexico for cheap labor, and then bringing China into the World Trade Organization, now you go, let's go to the media. He's the guy that deregulated it, in the Federal Communications Act, I believe it was 1996. Clinton did that? Oh, oh yeah. And, and, it, and, and you stayed, there were thousands of little radio stations back then and loads of media everywhere. And now the bigs, what is it? Five companies own 92% of the media. And they're, they're the big corporations. And you look at the facts. You listen to the, uh, Murdoch, son over there. And he said, yeah, he said, we're in Financial Times, quoting him. Oh, this is our market. This is what we, the, we put and This is who we go for. Oh, so they're going for a particular market. We're not, we're not going for a particular market. We're putting out information for everybody to use. We're political atheists. We put the facts out. Oh, and by the way, it's the grand total of $2 a, day, uh, a week. The, 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 the paper of record, they call themselves, I call it the toilet paper of record, the New York <laughs> Times, is $3 a day. I read it every day to see what they're saying to get the mainstream view so I can see where the people are floating into and there's barely an article I get out of the paper that we can use that has trendworthy value of it. That's how bad it's gone down. So how much does a trans journal cost and uh, how do they get delivered and all this stuff? So it, it's $129 know. a year, $2 a week. Jeez. And we send it out. It's a weekly. Um, you know, it's like, it averages about 160 pages, no ads, flip book, and you can read what you want. You know, it's a real magazine. You know, there's all information. What in the world is going on socially, politically, socioeconomic? We cover the world from high-tech science to uh, to geopolitics to 
health, fitness, and nutrition. I don't know how you guys do it because it's a, it's a piece of work twice a week. I mean, twice a, twice well, a month. We really care. You know, we, we, you know there, there's a great quote. It does not take a majority to prevail, but rather an irate, tireless minority keen on setting brush fires of freedom in the minds of men, said Samuel Adams. And you and I and the others like us are those people that are putting out the information for we the people. You know, we are that irate, irate, tireless minority. Just give me the facts. I, give me the facts. I could think the rest out for myself. Right. I don't need uh, an official or an authority to tell me how I should understand the socioeconomic, geopolitical, uh, and economic and other facts. Yeah, you know, when it comes to high science and high tech, yeah, I'm not the cat, but I could get the other stuff straight. So how how did you get into this business, Gerald? I mean, because you're <laughs> it's it's impressive work. I mean, it's, oh, thank you. It's, uh, bless you. It, for doing it, it. It's a long story. I, I began working on political campaigns in Westchester County. It was these, they, they were grooming me. I became the assistant to the secretary of the New York State Senate. I designed and instructed American politics and campaign technology at St. John's University. I was chief government affairs specialist for the chemical industry back in the 70s. Oh, okay. I was on the other side of the fence. I was killing environmental legislation at the height of the environmental movement. Yeah, all I wanted to do was make money, you know, and that was it. And I did. That photographs of me and Ronald Reagan when we put on a brunch for him and 16 of my board of directors. So I've been on the other side. I've been with princes, presidents, and prime ministers. And then I started to realize that it's a rigged game. Where George Collins said, it's one big club and you ain't in it. So I pulled out of it. And I didn't want to be in that club. And I realized that current events form future trends, but all they do is they sell you government propaganda, and one story is at a time. So if you only listen to an economist or listen to somebody in one field, opportunity misses those who view the world through the eyes of their profession. So we have a global nomic perspective. We look at everything that's going on, whether we like it or not. I, I go to Financial Times. I go to the, the Global Times, the Chinese Times, you know, the Global Times. I go to the, the Japanese newspapers. I go to Haaretz, the Israeli. I go to Fars News Agency, the Iranian. I go to Al Jazeera, the Arab. You know, I, I, I go to France 24. I go all over the world. I want to learn what everybody is doing, everybody's saying, what their pitch is, get the information, and then I'll figure out where it's going. Okay, so this is the question I have for you. The, 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 the issue with the Trans Journal prior to this last one is your headline says, this one is, this, this week's is the stupid. And like I said, we've entered a whole new definition of stupid beyond stupid. But um, this last one is the big lie, Russia will lose. Are you yeah. saying the idea that Russia will lose is a lie? No way they're going to, to us, you know, we're, again, totally against the invasion, not my trip. I'm an American. It's not my business. Uh, I, I, again, I, here, this is the Trends Journal from 2014. Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, former Assistant Treasury Secretary under Reagan, wrote in detail America's coup of the democratically elected government of Yanukovych, the Ukrainian president. So, again, there's a lot of sides to this story. So I understand the why, but I'm totally against the, 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 the how it happened. So having said that, only looking at the facts, once upon a time, there was a guy by the name of Napoleon Bonaparte. He left Poland with 420,000 troops to attack Moscow, came back with 10,000. There's a famous chart of it. And then once upon a time, not too long ago, there was somebody by the name of Adolf Hitler who launched Operation Barbarossa and killed between 25 million and 30 million Russians. And they were the first ones to defeat Germany, Eastern Germany. That's the one they came in. That's why they took it over. So we don't see them losing. And the only thing that by sending more weapons is it's going to make a bad situation very worse because what they keep saying is Russia keeps taking over more territory and now they're up to almost 25% of Ukraine, 
is that they say, well, you know, we just pulled back. This is a strategic move. You know, I've, I've heard these stories before. So a country of 40 million isn't going to beat a country of 140 million with one of the most advanced militaries, by the way, that they don't talk about weaponry in the world. They're hypersonic. We're not. Jeez. So you're saying that people want Russia to lose, but they're not going to lose. That's, that's what you're going for. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why, ladies and gentlemen, please get the Trans Journal, $130 a year the best investment you could make because it's the best investment into your mind and you can change how you look at the world. So we look at it as our company. It's hard to get through because you got so much stuff in there, but everything is interesting. You know, that's the, that's the worst part about it. I feel I'm missing if I don't read it. But anyway, I really want to thank you for your contribution to the society at this time. And um, we we're talking about it at our age. <clears throat> I think the blessing we have is we still have a oh. purpose. We have a purpose, you know? I mean, it's good to have something to get up to and feel it, feel it makes a difference. So Yeah, they, um, they suck the joy out of life with this COVID war <clears throat> and all the other things that they're doing. And we're doing everything we can to bring it back. As I say, you know, I don't know if it was Jesus, Muhammad, or Buddha, but one of them said, you better boogie before... The lights go out because tomorrow is iffy. Anyway, my friend, thank you very much. Keep up the great work. The Trans Journal, everybody, you've got to get that because this world is changing way too fast yeah. and you cannot depend upon mainstream media. Thank you, Mr. Salente. Oh, and thank you, Mr. Karasaki. And thank you for all you do and all you give to the people and how many people you've helped over the years. I greatly admire you and, and thank you for all that you do. It's, it gives an old guy like me a purpose to get up in the morning. <clears throat> so anyway, we have money. We have enough money. It's not about the money anymore. It's yeah. about how do we make it a better world. Yeah. So thank you, and thank you everybody for listening to the Rich Dad Radio Show. Bye. <music> Welcome back, and thank you to Gerald Salente. I'm going to have a little wrap-up with Sarah here, and, because she speaks for you if we got too happy talking about <laughs> the old days in New York. But Sarah, what, what did you pick up from Gerald? Well, actually, the biggest thing, which, you know, I'll probably leave in for the, you know, for the final production. I think the enlightenment of your generation, his generation, um, you're screwed. But the big, he really is nervous about those generations that followed you. Yes. And I am um, too. yeah, and I think that's gives me the hope that what we're doing on this show is a small, you know, we are trying to make a huge impact for our listeners and at least bring awareness. And, um, because this outlook, I mean, right now it seems so bad and, and the light at the end of the tunnel doesn't seem close. And that's why I was saying, you know, just last week I was in, Man, you know, Manhattan, yeah. <clears throat> right next to where my uncle and aunt live Upper East Side. And I had no money, you know, I mean, as a kid, 18 years old, going, you just cannot, you know, coming from Hilo, Hawaii, <clears throat> where a high rise is a two story house made out of wood, <laughs> <laughs> and everybody's sound asleep, you know, watching TV. And then I'm walking in the streets of New York, and you look up and you go, Holy mackerel, this, these were built in the 50, I mean, the 820s and all this stuff. They've gone through hell, they've gone through depressions, they've gone through this, and they kept fighting on. So take a company <clears throat> public to be clapping on the television mm -hmm. screen and saying, that's the height of free market capitalism, and that's what we write for. Now, you don't want to be a free market capitalist? Fine, but just don't yeah. take, don't take away my choices. Yeah. So anyway, this, it's just been the best. So, what el what else you take away from him? Well, one thing I want to mention about the Trends Journal is, just as Gerald is as fun and energetic on this um, interview, he his he writes that way. It is very easy to understand. I w um, they sent me last the one that published yesterday, uh, this morning. So I was th th thumbing through it for prep for this show, and it's stuff I can understand. Yeah. And so um, I think that's why. And you're interested in. Yes, it may it does make it interesting. It it's you know there's some out there that are so boring. I'm like oh, I can't read this, um, but he does. He keeps it short and simple. Each topic is short and yep. simple and clear. Um, so I really appreciate that about him. And I just, you know, I always love having him on because the energy that he brings is so fun. Yeah. So well, I'm, I'm telling everybody, <clears throat> I never do it because 
I know I'm well known, but I don't do it to be famous. It's not right. the reason I do it. And <clears throat> I was just in New York City like last week, and uh, I'm walking in this little park next to the Four Seasons Hotel. There were five people in the park, and four knew who I was. I couldn't believe it. And like, so there was, there was two young women. They worked for MTA, Metropolitan Transit Authority. They said, thank you for doing what you're doing. Going, thank you for telling me, you know. And there's another guy, he was crying. He goes, <laughs> what's going to happen to us? I said, I don't know, man. Another guy was another guy. He was a student at N NYU. And he says, I switched to, I switched to um, finance because of your book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Then I go to the <clears throat> front front door of the Four Seasons and the bellman where the head guy there says, you know what I tell people? I said, what? He says, I tell people, don't buy Nike shoes, buy Nike stock. <laughs> I said, good for you, you know, and all this. So I'm going, holy mackerel. I'm in New York City. I was walking this neighborhood as a kid. I, you know, I just mm -hmm. kept looking up. Most magnificent buildings. I love that stuff. Then I go to the stock exchange. There's a picture of George Washington there. I'm going, holy mackerel, yeah. you know. And I come back to Phoenix, and I'm and in this little store. And the woman says, "Rich Dad, what's that?" <laughs> <laughs> so so you, you almost had a full circle moment, and then she ruined it. <laughs> yeah, she goes. But it really is true. She says, "You cannot be a prophet in your own town." Yeah. 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 Nobody knows me here. And that's why you can walk so freely generally. Yeah. Except at the mall. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> um, real quick, where I want to tease that the uh, episode that you did at the mine. Yeah, the, you got to check that out. What was that like? For you? you saw. I, I've seen a it. teaser. They're still editing it together because there was 700 gigs of footage. So this file is massive. So they're still working on it. But they did put together a teaser. And I'm just like, first of all, how lucky are we to have that opportunity? Or you? And uh, I'm so thankful that you really pushed for that idea because how creative and you know um we're 625 I mean, feet under the ground if anybody else has done that please let me know because otherwise i'm going to start saying we are the only the first and only that's ever done it from the mine but, but you said the quality is unbelievable huh? oh their team that the the videography team or the media team that they sent along with you um it looks like Hollywood made this teaser. I'll post it. I'll post it, start posting it to your social media so people can see what I'm talking about. It's unbelievable. So what I say is like, you know, a lifetime happened in a day. So I'm walking in the park in New York City. I ring the bell. We climb on our private jets. We fly to Provo, Utah. We go down 625 feet. I saw one ore sample. This is mine is 140 years old. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I saw one ore sample. It had a thousand ounces per ton. What's cons I took one company public in China. We had ten ounces per ton. And uh. we, th we thought we struck gold. This mine was so rich. The gold was just hanging on the walls. And I've heard stories like that, but to yeah. see it, you know. Yeah. But you know what happened? <clears throat> the way these guys found it was they're of course really smart dudes, young guys. But they took a hundred forty years of mining records. They digitalized it, mm -hmm. and they're able to make it into a 4D presentation so they could see where the goal was. They took 140 That's years of insanity. information, digitalized it, made it so that they could see the picture, and they said they were like eight feet from the richest, you know, these, yeah. these old guys were just yeah. kind of chipping away. Well, I think Marin mentioned that um, this was shortly after, I think he brought, brought it to you or you know told yeah. you about it he said all they had to do was like turn left yeah like they were digging straight or something the way he described it on that episode i was like these guys but i mean to have that information the 40 140 years worth of information holy cow i don't know if that's luck <laughs> no but it's, you know from the mine from the show in the mine 625 yeah. feet down it was kenny McElroy, myself and these two other guys i mean geniuses yeah and we said, there's a gold mine right, right under your feet. Everybody has one. Yep. And this was this mine was sitting there for 140 years, and they just took new technology. They have this new gun. They don't have to send the samples to them, mm. to the ore, you know, the chemical lab. They can the, the gun will read the sample on the spot. Wow. And that's technology. So there's more opportunity ever before, but most people are sound asleep. Yeah. And that's, you talk about that a lot with just a cell phone. Yeah. Look at the cell phone. My God, they can. You can do it. You know, you can do anything. You talk about your, you know, you'll be in South Africa and doing deals in Canada. Like the, you, it is true. There's more opportunity. Yeah. 
if you wake up. Remember, I was in Botswana talking yeah. to Marin. Yeah, in Canada. and it was about that deal, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. He's saying, I got this, 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 yeah. this, this. I said, okay, okay, da, 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 da. I'm sitting in Botswana, yeah. Africa. And then the only reason I know what Marin was doing is because I'd already failed so many times in the Chinese coal mine. Yeah. So all the failures paid off with this one deal with Marin. Yeah. Now it's the richest gold mine in the world. We broadcast or we podcast from 625 feet down. I mean, and then I was walking in the park where I was a kid in eight, at 18 years old, thinking, oh my God, how in the world am I ever gonna get rich? You know, look at this place. <laughs> so as my, I, I said to the guys, I said, a lifetime happened in a day. Mm -hmm. New York City, five, 625 feet down to the richest gold mine in the world. That's free market capitalism, and that's what we stand for. Thank you for listening to the Rich Dad Radio Show.